Hello there, everybody. It's Danny Peace via the Corn Violin. Welcome to a brand new video, which is going to be a sort of tutorial, sort of. I don't know. Just basically, I guess it is sort of a tutorial. It's basically an introduction slash tutorial of Open TTD. That is Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe. Originally, Transport Tycoon, thus Transport to Tycoon Deluxe, Deluxe, were games by Chris Sawyer. And then eventually, he allowed Transport Tycoon Deluxe, TTD, to become open sourced. Thus, we have Open TTD. In fact, it wasn't too long after TTD was released that he allowed it to go open source, which is fucking awesome. So as a result, about 2004 actually, which I think was uh, five years after it released, he actually let it go open source, and this community popped up, and so OpenTD TTD became a thing first then. So first off, I want to show everybody the scenario editor. The scenario editor is pretty NFT. Of course, you start out by default with a completely flat map. Here you can do trees and other type and trees in general. So you can have your forests, and you can keep it completely flat. If you so desire, though, you can also shake it up a bit. That's the map I'm smart. Uh, you can also shake it up a bit by clicking Create New Scenario by clicking on this individual. What you'll do is you'll have a option to set the map size. You have 64 by 64, which is the most tiniest thing ever, just enough for one small town or city. 128, 256 by 256, uh, by 12, so 24, 46, 40, or 400, maybe 6, 496. Actually, I think you can set it whatever dimensions you want. In this case, prove you can. You can set it to 496 by 512, or 64 if you wanted to. Well, obviously, I like the biggest maps I can get. I like big maps, and I can't lie. So, we do that in this case. And then, of course, you can select year. Now, normally, people would just do this this, but if you'd rather be nice and quick about it, you can just type in whatever year you want. Boom! 1895! And then you'll get literally whatever's available in 1895 when it comes down to vehicles and track types and all that. So you'll also get uh, realistic successes of towns, realistic looking industries and buildings and all that, unless you use a new GRF. However, we will officially touch on that in just a little bit. If you just say flat land, it'll just generate another map just like this. It's completely flat and it literally won't have changed anything except for now your trees are gone in this case. We're gonna go back to 2000 just for the hell of it. And we're going to do random land. What that does is it opens this menu. What you do is you have Terra Genesis or the original one. I like Terra Genesis. I think most people do use that number of towns is off because you're generating the towns yourself typically and that's exactly what I like to do. I have it as very flat you can set the maximum map height to whatever you want the game maximum the game allows or less than that. System line height is set in the actual normal world settings they're here and uh, yeah and then of course you have the date again you have number of industries again it's set so that you set out the industries yourself which is the and then what I like to do is just mini random industries and I just say build, but I always, my rule kind of is I always wait until I have all the different towns and cities laid out. Then I lay them out, or I let them do the random things, but you can do mini random towns as well. So what we're going to do here is demonstrate this. A few rivers because actually the amount of water generated is actually a lot more than you would expect with low. And you can set the map edges to random or something you can dictate or whatever else. It totally works, it's totally fine, and it's great. So, as you can see, it went through its rendering, and it, or the rendering, I should say, it's, uh, what you wanna call it? Oh my, it's... Generation? Got it. Took me five years. And so that's what happened. No! Northwest Jackson Lee here. You can do random name, as you can see, if you're even slightly familiar with open PTD. This is not the default names. This is what you call a new GRF. It's a custom thing. New town if you want to place it and then you can choose whatever size you want or random and choose to make it a city or a town. 
Hey, they got three by three grids, better roads, two by two, or original. I'm gonna do original just for the sake of it, just for the hell of it. And actually, I'm gonna make sure it's a large city because I want to have the best possible example of what the road layouts and original look like. So, here you go for the original road layout. It's a, it's a pretty big mess, but it works, I guess. Although there's a lot of dead ends and stuff, which can be annoying for efficiency in terms of routes. Especially how close things get. Not exactly a great thing, but at the same time, at least it ha distributes variety really well. And let's go for uh, now the better roads, so you can see a direct side-by-side -side comparison between the two. So this is slightly more gridded, but it still is effectively the same and can end up in the close-by dead ends and things like that as well. Um, and the biggest factor that I find deters me from this kind of word layout is the fact that if you have other cities that are on grids, or even just other cities in general, they do not like to connect their roads. They instead just build up against each other's city limits, and so they blockade potential road connections, which really sucks and is really sad and unfortunate. That said, let us go on to, really quickly, 2x2 two two and then 3x3. Three 2x2? Three. Two Self-explanatory. Boom. There's your three by three road layout. Look at that eight egg soon, baby. It's not too bad. This is the default soundtrack, by the way. It's all general use music. Royalty free, obviously. So it's pretty freaking awesome. Now let's show many random towns. And what that did is all over the map. Let's see you this one right here. Sutton Valley. As you can see, they put a bunch of different towns around. Now, it did a large city technically, because with three by three grids, because I had them selected. And so when I did random, well, that's what it did, because it didn't have the random on the road layouts, nor did I have it on the town size. And also I had it set to city, whereas if I wanted it to be towns, I would have just unchecked that. Now let's go on to industry. Mini random industries, boom. As you can see, just like before with the cities, it pops up a bunch of industries everywhere. And this is the default map layout. So what that means is the key is already the same as it was. In this mode only, the scenario editor, you can actually customize the town sizes. So as a result, you can click expand and of course, it's going to expand. That's a beautiful thing. Now, depending on the size of the city or town, and if it is a city or town, it will grow depending on that. Also, other factors like surrounding areas. An example, other cities and towns, like Issaquah here just got blockaded, so it's gonna grow way slower, as you can see. Plus, it's also restricted by the industry and by the river here, the hill, just like Bell Hill was, as well as the water. So as a result, it's gonna have a hard time growing. Let's te test out clay, y'all. Now see, this also is another thing that can restrict its growth. It's road layout type. As you can see, there's a big ass gap here that got blocked off from being filled in in every department. So that is just gonna be a blank space there. It's actually, ironically, three by three, which means it's the perfect size for a commuter airport. So, that's pretty nifty. You can edit the values as much as you'd like. You can! You can do it inside of the mode. You can increase or decrease. Now, you can turn that on to be able to edit the values via cheat menus when you actually play in the game. All right, folks, next up on the itinerary is new GRF. What you have here is my current custom preset of all of my current active new GRFs. Well, these are all my inactive ones that I have downloaded. And I have a fuck lock. So what you can do is, in order to find your own Neo GRFs, you just click on that, find online content, and then sword and lamp, sword and lamp, you have a booshki. You have a billion and one new GRFs. Whether it's custom content, it's in custom vehicles, custom roadways, Custom art style, custom buildings, custom town names, custom music, 
Custom, custom, custom. Everything, of course, is technically a modification. It's custom. That's what they're called, and this is new GRFs. New graphic reference files. I'm going to know. Some of them actually can straight up alter the entire way the entire game works. Others alter the way, say, AI works and paths. Some just do no pathing. Like this one, literally, it's just something where it's abnormal decay. Just randomly termites will come in and eat your pieces of your train tracks. I actually once tried to play with that. It's like you have to goshawk your all your rail tracks because so consistently they eat it. It's like, dude, the rate needs to be toned down a bit. But yeah, there's just a bunch of different uh, things, including that, which is kind of a unique concept. It's really cool. So you get to do that, and uh, yeah. Of course, in some of these, you can also alter the parameters. So, an example, what I can do here is I can go all the way up to the top. I'm going to go to World Airline and Set, and I can do Set Parameters. And some of them actually have specific parameters in them. In this case, Cost. And you can turn on or off range limits on the aircraft. Now, if you would like to use one of your custom music sets, and I fortunately can actually do that without having uh, potential future demonetization problems by doing Scott Joplin Anthology. Because this is it's fucking awesome and they don't fucking charge anybody for it. Smart people. It's fucking awesome. This is the Ice Cream Man song, by the way, otherwise known as The Entertainer is the actual name. Just for, for information. Anyway, you also have, of course, Alternate sound effects. Uh, I haven't tried these other ones before. Uh, yes, and then of course you can customize anything, so left or right, depending on if you're backwards and upside down, like a crazy British or not. You have the custom uh, town names you can select, or the base game ones. You have the settings for auto saves or reserves. You can choose whatever currency you want, and yeah, look, there's a fuckload of them. Also, there, apparently there's a custom one. I just realized. Uh, I didn't know that was there. The more you know, today I learned. Uh, you can set the resolution, of course, if you want it to be full screen or not. You can set the font size, you can set the interface size, all the predictable stuffs. Here you have a script setting. That's an also another new GRF file. You can download whatever custom AI you want. Obviously, you're going to need to do that if you want to have a bunch of different AIs. As you can see, you can set it as, just leave it as random AIs, or you can actually set specific AIs where you want them to spawn in. And you can move them up or down by clicking these and mull over. You can select the AI by clicking select AI. You can configure it by number of days. Uh, the AI starts off as the previous one. That goes for each independent one. And yeah, you have all this stuff. It's pretty nifty. Okay, and then we have the normal settings. I have it on expert show all settings, including weird ones. I highly recommend you use that, or at least advanced, but I highly recommend the expert ones. And it's gonna be boring. It's gonna take a little long time to get through it and customize exactly as you want to your playstyle. But this is, of course, what I do because I'm from Cascadia. I'm from Oregon. Of course, I'm gonna use freaking Imperial, I'm not a masochist. Same with this date format, of course. And then uh, you have the graphics. The graphics, you can set uh, the zoom levels of a line. You have the land use, uh, land uh, yeah, color. Sure, why not? Thickness of lines on the graphs, the giraffes. And yeah, we'll I'll do this really quickly. You can set it to metric or SI. I'm not entirely sure what the hell SI is, but sure. You have the sounds, you can turn on button clicks on, construction, ticker, all that stuff which appears down here, and the save games, which we'll see in a little bit. And save yourself, pops up like a window like this in the middle. Again, you can customize that and select it. End of year, disasters, accidents, vehicles, la 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 la. Interface, you get the idea. This is where everything gets customized. It's pretty nice. Uh, yes, indeed. Now, when it comes down to the news and advisors, these are the settings I highly recommend you play. I play with it this way because it really gets overwhelming, especially the deeper in the game you get, and the more AI you have, a little the more vehicles you have, the more routes, 
the more monotonous that gets, and the more intrusive it gets with all these pop-ups, and the more it lags your game. So I would just recommend these settings for literally it all. But anyway, you have the company chorus, uh, automatically builds the more as before, 1950, da 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 da, you have the signals, the company color, random, blah, blah, blah. you have all this stuff of course, pretty nifty, the vehicles themselves, so yeah, there's the general settings, you have the routing, I have all this on, I'm pretty sure, other than these, I'm pretty sure it's on by default, you have the physics, boom. You get the idea. Uh, but yeah, and then the limitations are important, of course, because, you know, allow terraforming under buildings and tracks. <clears throat> kind of important. Uh, remove tunnel roads, bridges and tunnels, again, important. The maximum bridge lengths and heights, and same with tunnel lengths, and the maximum map height. And airports never expire, vehicles never expire, yada yada, etc, etc. The maximum amount of vehicles per company, all this stuff. All very important stuff to make sure that you have customized to your liking. Disasters, accidents, I always have recessions and disasters off, breakdowns off, accidents off. World generation, you have all this of course. Towns, which I feel is very important to pay attention to and take a look-see at, same with the authorities. Yeah, so there you go, people. The competitors, uh, you have the default ones, which are multiplayer, and then you have, of course, computer players. Boom, you can customize that up if you want to. Okay, now here we are, an old save game of uh, my current save that I'm playing right now. And in fact, I just played on my last live stream. This is American Idol. This is uh, something that I want to show you what you can do. Boom! 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 As much as they'll allow you to. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Actually, they're allowing me to do destroy their entire city. I feel terrible. But yeah, as an example, you can just, uh, just, just, just... I don't know why they're allowing me to destroy the entire city. It doesn't exist anymore. What the fuck?! It doesn't have to do that! That is, that is entirely unexpected. You, they will get angry at you eventually and say, you can't touch me. They let me destroy the entirety of their entire existence. Look at this. They don't exist. They're just a figurative existence now. Again, another thing that I did not expect, but today I learned? Question mark? Okay then, anyway. Here we go. Boom, control, shift, C. Oh no, sorry, alt, control, C. And you have the cheat ski doodles menu. Yes, indeed. So you can increase or decrease the amount of money you have company as much as you want and of course it will automatically check off what you have done so of course it warns you about the fact that uh, everybody is about to be disgraced by what you're doing to the luscious loins you can also swap companies if you want you can turn on and off the magic bulldozer i highly recommend it because obviously the magic bulldozer as it says allows you to remove industries and other otherwise indestructible and immovable objects if you like a sandbox experience. Also, I destroyed the river, I just realized. Um, yeah, the tunnels may cross each other. That, if you have the uh, crashes and stuff like that turned off in disasters, that's never a problem. You have jet planes will not crash frequently on small airports, which means the big airplanes, the big airliners. And of course, you can enable or disable modifying production values that's on industries, like an example. I can modify it here. Whereas otherwise, I couldn't possibly do that. You can edit the map height here if you want to. It's gonna, of course, cause the game to be like, FUCK! Because what it's probably doing is it's probably cutting off a chunk, a, a block worth of the thing. Also, you can change the date. I'm not actually gonna do that. But yeah, you can change the date at any point you want as well. That said, from there, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's off to the races with ya. You can do whatever you want, man. Just like you place anything else, whether in scenario editor or not, you can place down airports, any size you want. You can place down anything water-wise, anywhere you want, so you need to be able to. Same with roadway stuff, railway stuff. Different kinds of railway, of course. It's pretty nifty, streetcar stuff, you know, just the usual. 
And of course, you can still do the landscaping, shizzle, mainizzle. Here, you can look at your airplanes. Here, you can look at your ships. Here, you can look at your murder vehicles. Here, you can look at your Trons. And here, you can also, on each of these, if they have them, they'll be obviously marked out if they don't, you can look at any other company that exists, list of vehicles. And if you want to, of course, replace any of your vehicles, say this one, all you'd have to do is effectively do this. Say replace vehicles. Then you get a selection of what you want to replace all the vehicles on your list with. So be sure you want to uh, make a list by dragging it over here, say, and then it'll ask you to name the group. And you can name it whatever the frick you want. You say okay, and boom, it's a part of that group. Make sure you make a custom grouping. So before you do the, the mass uh, refitting, because it's very important to do that, obviously. Now, here's the industry directory. It lists all the different uh, industries in the world, and also how much has been transported of each thing. It'll take you right to one. Uh, you can also do the industry chains. That'll show you where each what each thing needs from you. Uh, you has the, of course, fund new industry, and all it means is that you can place down an industry. Boom! I wait to fund. Boom, boom, there you go, it's placed the apartments in the strip, which is New Europe, by the way, it's not normally there. Uh, you have the operating profit graph, the operating everything else, you know, all the operations, basically. You have the different companies, boom. You can look at their finances. Cool. And, of course, you can buy a share in the company. Then you have the finances, of course, uh, the actual finances of the companies. Here is the list of cities. It's where you can do the quick travel between all the different cities you have in your game and also see how pissed off they are at your service or lack thereof. And then, of course, you have, much like the fund industry, you have the found town. No town. Medium. 3x3 three three grid. Found. Ethel. Congratulations. You exist. And then, of course, you're going to have a game script. I didn't realize the game was still running. Uh, thought I had a pause. Oh, I do have a pause. Well, then, I don't know how the heck that just happened. The script still broke, apparently. Anyway, yeah. And then you have the map, of course. Of the wild. It's a beautiful thing, friend. And, yeah. You can scroll around that. And that's pretty much it. And, of course, you can speed up the game by clicking this one or not. It is self-explanatory. With that said... I uh, hope you guys learned something today, and hope you enjoyed this. I hope this helps you out in some way, shape, or form. And yeah, I hope to see you whatever the next video or live stream may be. Before, be, before to submarine sandwich and subscribe. It's pretty important to sort of help also. There is no that you your boy is pretty entertaining and helpful. And you really enjoy his personality. Uh, I might as well just not even try to speak properly because at this point. I'm so bad at speaking my own language that I can't even say words right, so I might as well just be an idiot. Anyway, but yeah, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more entertaining content if you like my face, my personality, like the pain I cause everybody and myself every single day I record or stream. Uh, or just for shits and giggles or whatever, I don't care, but it would be very helpful, very much appreciated, and let me know if you enjoyed it, and let you Google know as well, beautiful. And, um, yeah. Feel free to leave a lick as well. Like if uh, you enjoyed this one. Feel free to ask a question or say anything down below. See you later. Peace out, more niggas, and bye bye. Landscaping. That's trees. I fucked up. Apparently, there's upgrades to some of the stuff I have. Didn't know that. Didn't see it. Good to know.